An anime legend gets a brand new adaptation. It's time for the return of Osamu Tezuka's famous series, Dororo. <laughs> Greetings, my friends. It's 2019, which means it's a brand new winter anime season. And to be honest with you guys, going into this season, there were not a lot of shows that I was looking forward to. And to be honest, I thought everything was just going to be crap. That was basically my issue, though. It was just a case of judging books by their covers. And I was really intimidated by Dororo. And yes, I'm probably mispronouncing the hell out of that, but just work with me here. You see, Dororo is a classic series. It's a re-adaptation of a manga and anime of the same name. It's from creator Osamu Tezuka, and if you don't know who that is, well, he's effectively an anime legend. He's considered one of the gods of anime. He's most known for being the creator of Astro Boy, Blackjack, and The Lion King. Oh, excuse me, Kimba the White Lion. Seriously, The Lion King is a ripoff, look it up. But Dororo is an adaptation of another one of his classic stories. A story story that I have no association with and have no knowledge of. I went into the series not really knowing what it was going to be, and I was a little intimidated by Dororo. I thought that it was just going to be a period piece kind of anime, and it still kind of is. It takes place in the Sengoku period. While I can actually say Sengoku period, I couldn't tell you what the fuck it is or what it actually involves. I just know that this is a certain period in the point of Japan, and luckily, it looks like the entire show is not going to be a Japanese history lesson. No, it's actually going to be a story of redemption, as well as fighting against evil monsters. This entire show is actually all about the union of these two characters who have seemingly nothing to do with one another, and it looks like they're going to be dragged into a story which involves demons, monsters, and what happens when you play with the occult. That and the show has frankly just got some of the most beautifully executed action scenes that I've seen in a long time. There's an action scene at the end of this episode which absolutely blew me away with its overall fluidity and the big surprise that the main character himself is quite literally a living weapon. So what's the story behind Dororo? Well, as I said, it takes place in the Sengoku period of Japan, and there is this ruler who goes by the name of Daigo, and his wife is about to give birth. While reflecting on the fact that his very first son is about to be born, we go to a flashback sequence where apparently he made an evil deal with some devils. We get to see that he goes to this like ancient shrine, which is known as like the Pathway to Hell, which is filled with all of these giant demonic statues, and he actually ends up killing the monk who's in charge of this place, and he actually makes a command and bargains with these demons, asking that if they give him prosperous land and make him a much more powerful ruler, that they can simply take anything away from him. They respond by saying, fuck yeah, by blasting him right in the face with a big blast of lightning, right as his son is born, he is immediately struck with the very same lightning, which, unlike his father, doesn't leave a really cool-looking X scar, but absolutely fries the fuck out of this child. He has no eyeballs. He can't hear. No arms. No legs. No skin. He's basically mini Darth Vader. And they don't sugarcoat it at all. They actually show this baby, and it's absolutely fucking horrific looking. And Daigo realizes that there's no way that they can raise a son with these type of deformities, and he asks one of his handmaidens to actually take this kid away and eventually get him killed. However, this old woman who's getting ready to toss him into the swamp decides that he is worth saving, knowing that everything she's done her whole life has been wrong. She puts him in a boat and sends him off a la Moses until suddenly she is eaten alive by a massive, giant demonic samurai creature with a human skull for a face. As the baby is drifting away, it is found by this mysterious monk who also happens to be a demon killer, and he has the coolest guitar ever. It's got a sword embedded into the guitar. It's just fucking awesome. And this guy has the ability to actually, like, see this evil demonic energy, and he actually can sort of, like, feel something similar coming from this baby. I can imply from the scene that maybe eventually he does find him and trains him in the way of actually fighting, but that isn't even revealed until the second half of the episode. The entire series is called Dororo, and this weird kid right here is not actually Dororo. In fact, it's another character entirely. We actually go through a time skip and we go forward and we get to see that we're introduced to Dororo himself, who is this 
this young delinquent who basically lives on the streets and rips off mob dealers, basically taking all of their goods and selling it to people for a very cheap price. And this ends up pissing off this group of goons who actually try to track him down throughout the entire episode, and watching him run away is actually kind of comical and fun, but eventually it does amplify to the point where they end up wanting to kill this kid. And a lot of that is because Dororo fights back. He throws rocks right in these dudes' faces, causing their eyes to start bleeding. And that's when they decide that this kid is effectively fucked. As they're getting ready to kill him, suddenly they notice this lone warrior who's hanging out on this bridge. He looks like he's actually going to end up helping them out, but he's actually looking off at the distance at something else entirely. When suddenly, both groups of people are attacked by this giant sludge monster, which ends up eating all of these gangsters, absorbing them into its body. That's when this lone warrior finally decides to go into the attack, and the big reveal of what his abilities are. He can actually remove his arms, and in place of those are quite literally swords. He has swords for arms, and he's able to trick this massive beast by following him around this massive bridge, cutting up pieces of it little at a time, until eventually it does get trapped underneath all of this rubble, and he's able to finish it off. This entire sequence is so expertly done, and so well animated, that it just has to be seen. And it's honestly what sort of solidified my love for this series, aside from the opening of the show, which I'll get to in a little bit. But this entire sequence was just so incredibly thrilling. And of course, the big reveal is that this warrior with swords for arms is none other than the child at the beginning of the story, the one who had no skin, no eyes, no ears, no limbs. This is him. And somehow he's been upgraded into some sort of like super-powered, almost prosthetic warrior. It's really creepy too because he's actually wearing like a porcelain mask which kind of makes him look like a living doll. He has no expression whatsoever and the fact that he didn't even have any of these limbs and he's still able to move like a freaking ninja is a massive accomplishment. Even though he can't seem to communicate or hear or even see anything, he's able to utilize those abilities like that monk in the beginning of the episode to be able to actually see evil and actually it's very overall shape which allows him to sort of move around this world quite effortlessly. However, at the very end of the episode, one of the weirdest things happened. After this warrior, who goes by the name of Hiyakimaru, ends up saving Dororo, he ends up losing his mask, and then suddenly he starts to regain his skin, his eyesight, his feelings. I'm not sure why this is actually happening, but it's a great move as they're finally going to be able to give this character a lot of expression. Although I have to admit, having a character who is completely mute and deaf and can't really like see anything is really intriguing in and of itself, and it really seemed like Dororo was going to be sort of like the main character of the series. But here it is. It's just a complete and utter mystery, and the only implication is that this has something to do with the deal that Daigo made with the demons all those years earlier. This might have something to do with the curse, with him suddenly getting all of his abilities back, only for him to return and maybe even get revenge against his father. It also gets shown that eventually their family did have another son who goes by the name of Tahamaru, and it looks like he's going to end up being a big rival for Hiyakimaru as well as for Dororo. This episode, guys, was a great introduction to this story. What's the rundown on the very first episode of Dororo? I'm so glad that the show didn't end up going into like a big super Japanese history lesson. That's what was going to turn me off the most. A lot of things that I as an American viewer probably was not going to understand. Now, I can't fully fault the show for that as, again, this is a Japanese anime made for Japanese audiences. They probably had no intention of trying to appeal to American audience on this one. And yet it still manages to do it with this incredibly awesome story, which has a lot of timeless elements that I think a lot of cultures are really going to be able to appreciate. But really the thing that struck me most about the very first episode was just how good the production value of the actual show is. As far as animation goes, this is animation for animation. There is a lot of movement from the characters. A lot of the time, they're not just sort of standing there all the time. They remember that this is an anime series and not cardboard cutouts, and it manages to install a lot of life in these characters. In particular, the character of Dororo, this little boy who has a tremendous amount of expression and a really fun 
cannot die attitude. I love those type of characters. And at first he might seem like he comes across as kind of like the annoying kid character of the show. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of personal growth from his character and I found myself really enjoying him. But it's hard not to be upstaged by Hiyaki Maru in this episode. The look of his character, the way that he fights, fighting against that monster was so incredibly fluid and awesome. And the way that the camera worked as they showed him going around to the various parts and slowly cutting them up one by one as this monster was desperately heaping its body through all of these cracks and everything trying to grab onto him was such a thrilling sequence. It just worked so damn well and it's got me so excited for this show. I cannot wait for more of Dororo. I'm giving the very first episode of the series a 5 out of 5, one of the best first episodes of anything that I've ever seen. It started out kind of standard in stock, but more as the episode went on, it absolutely sucked me into its premise, and I can't wait to see what it's going to do from here. I pray that the production value is going to be as good as it was in the first episode for every single one. It probably is not going to be. First episodes always tend to look a little better, but still, this was a great introduction to what is going to be a classic anime story story and a great introduction to one of the god of manga's most memorable series. That's right, Osamu Tezuka, his legacy lives on, and I honestly think that this one is living up to the hype. I'm giving this one a 5 out of 5, as I said, but I want to hear from you guys. If any of you watched the very first episode of Dororo, tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below, and what you hope to see from this brand new super-powered action supernatural story. Let's get a discussion going, guys. Also, before I go, let me just say that the intro for Dororo is just fucking incredible. The imagery itself is great, but man, that song just absolutely gets directly into your soul. I've only watched the intro a couple of times, but it's already left a massive impact on me. I love the imagery combined with the music, and if the show is even half as good as the intro, I think we're in for one hell of a treat. Give me fire! Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay down there, baby.